Lana Demko, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for coming on. Um, nurses were highly requested from people on Instagram, on YouTube, and people that I saw, and I mentioned this on every nurse that we interview. A lot of people um, in our area, at least, are looking to get into the medical field. Um, and so firefighter or a nurse, those are the two hot Yes, yeah, firefighter <laughs> <or> a nurse, <laughs> literally hot jobs, yeah. Um, which is... Which is interesting. I hope there's enough jobs for everybody. There's more and more. Lots of nurses are um, retiring. So yeah, yeah. From sure. what I know, nurses are always seems like understaffed. I don't know why that is because I feel like half of the world is trying to become a nurse. <laughs> but maybe they just don't hire them as much or it takes. Maybe a lot of people start becoming nurses or think they want to become nurses. Then when they realize how tough it is. Yeah, it sounds like every other... I don't know, student at schools, they'd say, oh, I want to be a nurse. But then I guess, you know, first you need to shadow a nurse to see if you want to be a nurse. Okay, that, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So actually, we had one question, not just one, we had a couple, but one of the questions we got on Instagram for nurses was, um, what is the hardest part of nursing school? Or what was the hardest part for you? Of nursing school. Of nursing school. I don't know if you remember that far back. Ah, uh, well, it's kind of like learning a, a new, you know, a new language. It's mm -hmm. it's everything is very very new. So going for my bachelor's as mm -hmm. a nurse, um, nurse to bachelor's was, mm -hmm. I want to say, like much much easier than doing the nursing school itself. Wow. Is it's, that because you've had the experience? Uh, no. Uh, nursing school, it's all about, um, you know, memorizing, uh, learning uh, all the kinds of little tiny bones that you, you know, in your skull, there's like, who knows, a hundred or something little holes that you have to know names for them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you never, ever use that afterwards. So you, okay. it's just that stress of memorizing and trying to have critical thinking when you don't even know what you know it's yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. there's like it's it's a, it's a whole new thing that you have to kind of build up to become a nurse okay. and then when i went back to school to get my bachelor's mm -hmm. this was like you know you sit uh, uh, around you know round tables and you kind of same levels with the instructors and students and mm -hmm. you it's so much more easier you know everybody's experience the the, the instructors probably trust their students much more than new students, maybe? Or is that... In nursing program? In, no. Like, the instructors the instructors trust students for, like, a bachelor's in your position than in the nursing program. Oh, for sure. For sure. It's 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 just they, they kind of treat you more, more like a person. Okay. Other than, you know, a nursing school, you felt like you're just that little... I don't know. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> that knew nothing and yeah. you just try to become somebody. But um, I guess we all had to go through it to you know, become a nurse. Yeah, it's a, it's a vetting process. You met, You just mentioned you went back to school for bachelors and the past couple nurses we had, they said that some hospitals still hire associate nurses. Correct. But mostly hospitals are moving away from that. Yes. So when I went to school, that was... Oh, I've been a nurse for 15 years now. Mm -hmm. So 19 years ago, mm -hmm. that's a long time. That is a long and I had no idea what nurses do. I had no idea how much schooling they needed. Yeah. I mean, I started um, at first, I guess it was kind of, oh, I think God kind of, you know, led me through mm -hmm. my life with mm -hmm. my choices. Mm -hmm. um, I had one of our... Um, people from our church came up to me and he's like, oh, so you're graduating from high school. What's next, you know? Yeah. And school was never like a big thing for me. You know, I, I never liked um, getting the stress of taking tests and right. I like to learn new things, but not the tests. Yes, yes, I can imagine. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, you know, we have this uh, job at our clinic. Would you be interested in working, you know, medical field, uh, mm -hmm. but doing kind of paperwork stuff okay. I'm like well sure you know and I worked at pizza at the time while I went to high school okay. and so he kind of got me the job you know okay. um, and I started working as a receptionist and then I had to translate for um, Ukrainian Russian speaking patients okay. um, and I kind of you know looked and saw what the medical assistants did and what other people did, mm -hmm. you know, other than me as a receptionist. And yeah. I'm like, hmm, this is kind of, you know, not too hard. I think I can do this, you yeah. know, if I can only go through the schooling. Right. So I uh, decided to, you know, become a medical assistant. 
uh, went, uh, there was like a five months program. Mm -hmm. And if you get straight A's in the program and you don't miss a day, mm -hmm. you are guaranteed to go for your externship at Kaiser. Wow, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. crazy. So I tried hard and yeah. I did all A's and didn't miss a day. And mm -hmm. I got into Kaiser as a, you know, as an externship medical assistant person. Mm -hmm. And on the end of my, I um, think it was two months or something. I don't know the yeah, exact yeah. Um, amount of time, but um, the manager came up and he's just like, hey, would you like to work here? And I'm like, of course, you know, I've, who, who doesn't? So so, the, so you were kind of volunteering or were they paying you for it? So as part of schooling, you have to do kind of okay. like volunteering externship. Okay. Yeah. Okay, got you. So then, yeah, that's how I got my uh, first medical medical kind of a job as a medical assistant at uh, Kaiser mm -hmm. and um, nursing again I never thought of you know yeah. that I, I always thought that you know it's four years of college I'm like that's this is not probably for me. crazy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, started working as a medical assistant and one day um, one of the doctors said hey Lana do you have some time after work that we can talk to you and I'm mm -hmm. like oh my what I mean what I do wrong have I done something <laughs> wrong that I you know didn't know for something and yeah. uh because sure I said oh you know I of course and so when I went went into his office after you know after our five um it was eight to five um Shift. office hours yeah mm -hmm. He had like all the other doctors sitting there and I'm like, oh my goodness, really? What did I do? You know, and yeah, they yeah. were just so, they, they just said that you are so good with our clients and that yeah. you have to go on and get your nursing or your doctorate. I'm like, but I, the school is like, you know, <laughs> you guys I, don't know me. <laughs> I don't like the school. And they're okay. like, you know, you don't have to do everything at, you know, at once, at yeah. least take, you know, evening classes. You can work here, take a class or two, mm -hmm. um, your, you know, during your evenings and that's what I did. It that's was awesome. just, it was that one doctor that kind of encouraged me yeah, to yeah. become a nurse. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I bet like, look, so we just started talking about how nursing school is crazy hard and you were like, schooling isn't for me. Yeah. And a doctor encouraged you to become a nurse. You knew school wasn't for you, but because someone encouraged you, Right. You, you took the leap of faith. It was the doctor and plus my f dad. He was always, you know, even ever, ever anytime he had a little scratch, a little something, he would call me. I was yeah. the youngest. I am the youngest in our uh -huh. uh, family. And he's like, oh, can you take care of this for me? And I would always do that. And he's like, you you should be a nurse or you should be a doctor. But I that was never I never thought that I can be one, you know? Yes. Yes. So I bet people, someone watching or listening wants to be in the medical field but then they also hear the other side of like how much studying it is and they think school is not for me like i was never good at school mm -hmm. i mean you're a beautiful example of somebody like you said i mean school wasn't difficult but you're always stressed out for tests and i'm sure there's other people out there so as long as you put your heart to it your mind to it i it think can be it's, done. A, it's a goal you know if you have a goal in your life it can be huge, you know, but you have it and you take baby steps towards mm -hmm. it. You know, I did not do the whole, you know, four years in, you know, a day or two. It was right. taking at first it was two classes. I did evening uh, classes at Sierra College mm -hmm. and I even, uh, you know, after work, I would come to your guys's house remember, for dinner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was I that, did it, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. Good job. So. Let's talk a little bit about the what, like what it is you do, not not your not your schedule wise yet, but like the patients you work with, kind of what your floor is, the unit you're you're in, why it's why it's different from other units and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, after graduating from nursing school, I um, during school we went through all kinds of rotation. We mm -hmm. did in you know and surgery. Uh, you know, labor delivery, all kinds of uh, nursing. Because mm -hmm. of course, it, it's like a tree, you know, you have one tree, but you have a whole bunch of uh, different kinds of branches, right? right. Same yes. thing with nursing. And after I, you know, through the two years of a nursing program, mm -hmm. I've, um, I had few, only few days in ICU. Mm -hmm. And I was like, just, I loved it. I wow. thought this is so cool. You have one or two patients and yeah. you like, it's, it's kind of like your baby, you know, yeah. you know him, you know, from from the top to bottom, you know, you can like you see them, you know, yeah, your whole shift pretty much. It's it's kind of like taking care of a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whereas on other floors, it was, you know, four or five patients and you don't really have the time to, you know, because it's a lot. Yeah. And 
I mean, I'm saying yeah, but I can't really. Yeah, imagine. yeah, yeah. And so that that was my after I I didn't even have my license yet. I just got my recommendation letter from the doctor that was encouraging me to be a nurse, and mm-hmm. he gave me a, a letter, and um, you know, just went to that same ICU department that I did my um, rotation as a student, mm-hmm. and I said, you know, I loved ICU in mm-hmm. my few days here and I would love to work here yeah. and she's like okay when can you start <laughs> are you serious I'm like um and then I was like just kind of caught on the spot I'm like yeah. I, are you mean I'm hired she's like yeah no interview why do you want to have stress of interview you know yeah. like okay yeah so um wow that's so, a blessing yeah intensive care unit intensive care unit so well, how does the intensive care unit differ from I don't Any even other. know what a regular it's, unit it's or another the top. unit. The, it's the sickest, top. the most unstable patients come to us. Okay. Yeah. So you have people on breathing machines, on you know five, six, even more different medications that you have to titrate. Sometimes every three minutes, mm-hmm. uh, blood, you know, transfusions. Sometimes you can give. In one hour, you can give like I don't know twenty units of blood because oh, wow. somebody's like. Bleeding, bleeding, out. bleeding, bleeding, yeah. and you, yeah, it's it's sometimes gets pretty crazy, but it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so, so are you? I mean, like for example, this patient that's bleeding out. Are you working on this patient by yourself? Or no, are you getting help? no, no, no. So it things like that. Like I, there I was only one patient that we mm-hmm. had to use. There, there's a protocol that we have in our hospital, and it's kind of it's kind of like a code. You know, they mm-hmm. they call out, you know, massive uh, blood transfusion, um, mm-hmm. and then you know the house soup. Um, another nurse, a unit secretary, a lab person, everybody kind of, um, it's like a team. Okay. And you have a runner that goes to the lab and they pick up like five bags at the same time of blood. And yeah, then yeah. you have a nurse that has the, 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 the machine that just, you know, transfuses the blood, just yeah. goes like fast, fast, yeah. fast. And then you have the doctor right there that gives you the orders. And then mm-hmm. you have uh, somebody else that, you know, is trying to get a hold of surgery or cath lab or somebody that can go in and see that we can fix the What's whatever's on, bleeding. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the wow. patient that I had that had happened to, it was like um, he was admitted with GI bleed, you know, the bleeding in his stomach, stomach area. Okay. Yeah. And it has stopped. And then, so he was doing fine. And then all of a sudden he's like, I, I don't feel good. I don't feel like then he just becomes all kind of grayish. Mm-hmm. And, and then he, we see that his saturations, you know, uh, are dropping and he kind of becomes unresponsive. So okay. we call cold blue, of course. Yeah. And um, we already know that he had the trouble with the bleeding, you mm-hmm. know, so we had the, the GI doctor come and it was just this guy. I thought he was never make it, but wow. he came back. He taking, Yeah. That's awesome. So, so is every day you were saying you get to see, you you get to be, I guess, meet patients a little more in ICU. Do the patients in the ICU are they usually there for a long time? So you're watching them like on a week, like sometimes for weeks, or how does this? How does that? Work? Uh, so I mainly work in the um, neuro ICU. Okay. So mainly patients with brain tumors, strokes, you know, any kind of bleeds. Mm -hmm. Uh, Those are the kind of patients that we get. A lot of those patients that will still make to the hospital, they have pretty bad damage to their Mm -hmm. brain already. And a lot of them will probably never be back to their normal self or they even will die, you know. Uh, So a lot of them will stay in ICU for a while. Mm -hmm. And it's then it's taking care of them, mm-hmm. but it's their family too. It's a huge thing. ICU and, you know, patients and yeah. family members is huge. That's why every time I come to work on my way to work, I pray, please let me be the blessing yeah. to the family and to the patient, you know. Right. Because sometimes I'm guessing the patient's not always responsive. Right. They're in such cri- critical. Right. Because, you know, their blood pressure is low. They're on the breathing machine. We keep them sedated. We give them stuff to make them sleep and not remember yeah. any of that you know okay right yeah. so they're not maybe not in pain or whatever right um so you said you work mostly with patients with et- internal bleeding no 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 uh strokes like strokes uh, bleeding oh, in, okay. the brain, in the brain neuro okay. so anything okay. with the head okay, uh, okay, tumors gotcha. brain surgeries all that kind of stuff yeah okay um did, is there any specific stories or experiences that you had with a patient or with a with a family of a patient? Ah, uh, yes. I am going to actually talk about this lady that uh, I will never forget. Mm-hmm. Uh, she came in, um, you know, she did, she was talking. She, 
you know, with strokes or with brain tumors, you usually have, you know, like a dro droopy face. Mm -hmm. You can have slurred speech, speech. Sometimes they wouldn't even be able to talk to you or sometimes don't, don't understand you, mm -hmm. you know, weakness or paralyzed one side of the body. Mm -hmm. So this lady was totally still intact. She just had some headache and some, some like double vision or something, you know, like mm -hmm. not, not, not a lot of symptoms. And when they scanned her head, they found a tumor. Okay. And uh, you have this bad tumors that you know on a scan they you see the tumor but uh you don't see where it where 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 it ends you know okay. it's like a spread kind of a like, like it a, spreads thin like a web or yeah something? yeah yeah okay. and, and that's a very bad one because it's it's the one that it's very hard to take out okay because you know, it's everywhere right okay and there's these nice tumors that looks like bowl you know yeah, yeah and yeah. you can just scoop it out and especially if it's close to to the skull cool. it's uh -huh. just and that's what she had, you know. It was a, you know, not very big tumor, and it was yeah. close to the the skull. skull. And of course, number one thing would be surgery, you know. Right, right. This lady is declining surgery. Wow. <laughs> and we're like all shocked, you know. What do you mean, you know? This this is just, you know, you all you have to do is take it out. You yeah. have to take it out, and she's like, no. Uh, if, if if it can be God's will that I have this, you know, if I say okay to surgery, then what if I die on, you know, operating table and, you know, yeah. and we're like, wow, you know, so then we had chaplain come talk to her, we talked to her daughters, and what we did not know is that her husband passed like a year before from cancer, mm. and she was blaming herself that she was kind of fighting with God, um, for not curing his cancer oh okay gotcha. and she thought that this was the punishment that she got that she got this now because you know because of the way she responded to yeah, her yeah. husband having cancer wow and yeah so this lady we i don't know how long who i mean we all talked to her and to her family and mm -hmm. nobody could really make her you know do the surgery and uh one of my friends mm -hmm. uh no her family mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately she's not here anymore yeah. but as all choices you know it could be, yeah. have been just a you know quick fix surgery not even a very complicated one but so, so she declined nobody changed her mind right man that's yeah that's sad i mean i'm glad nobody we live in a country where we're not forced to do anything right. but some things are encouraged that are good for us right so we can definitely learn from that so what is your what is your typical what is your typical day? I mean, or your, your, let's start with like how many hours a week or schedule in the ICU unit, unit and then kind of what your day looks like. I work two days a week. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Two 12 hours, but that's, uh, so I've worked three days a week, mm -hmm. uh, 36 hours for maybe 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. And I've always, cause I'm like a big church person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as a, as, as a nurse, we all have to do every other weekend. So we okay. work every other weekend. And so I did that for many years. And but we have an option of putting yourself on call off list okay. 24 four hours before the shift that you want to get off, you mm -hmm. call this number and then you say, Oh, hi, da, da, da. I would like to be put on call off list. And then in the morning, if they're overstaffed, they mm -hmm. call you, they say, Oh, you want to take a day off? Okay. So I did that every every single Sunday I had to work. Yeah, and I yeah. got quite a few Sundays off, but it was always that, you know, oh, I have to work and I don't know if I'm going to get it off or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when the position came, 24-hour position, no weekends, I was That's like... <laughs> I was like, of course, so, um, you know, I'm going to yeah. apply for the so position. So did you need like seniority to get that? Or? Right. Okay. So then when I applied for the position, my manager's like, Lana, you know, there's people that have been here 20 plus years, you know, they, you know, that are everybody get it. wants to know no vacant position. I'm like, but let me try, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, well, next thing I know, they call me, Lana, do you want the position? I'm like, you know, of course. Wow. Yeah. Praise so now God. I just have the weekdays and no weekends. That's awesome, yeah. man. I feel like. I feel like your your uh, your career is like a magic. It's like my a magic whole life story. Is a magic. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome! Wow, you're, you, I I can say you got lucky. So two days a week. Blessed. Yes, blessed. Yes. Um, two days a week, twelve hour shifts. You did did you get to pick the time you started as well or? It was day. So the pretty much once you have the position open, it tells you the days. Okay. And the time. Okay. As a, when I started nursing, I did night shift for one year. Mm -hmm. 
then I did uh, 36 hours and then the 24 hour was um, two days two twelves. Okay. So you start, you come in, what, what does your day look like? Yeah, so we start at 6.45. Mm-hmm. I usually come like, I don't know, 10 minutes before. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, clock in. Mm-hmm. We have a phone system to clock in. Then we have a huddle. Mm-hmm. It's our manager, charge nurse, and all the nurses. Mm-hmm. All the, you know, we have um, nursing assistants. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we all have like a team huddle. They tell us how many patients we have, mm-hmm. how many surgeries that are be possibly coming to us. Um, okay. Staffing wise, you know, if we're understaffed, how many people staying for a double, you know, because mm-hmm. that happens to. Oh, wow, okay. Um, I don't know, just kind of, uh, you know, heads up on everything. And then yeah. after that, um, you, you either go um, get report for your uh, patients that mm-hmm. you get, or you can be support. So then we have four units and you support, you know, for the five nurses in one unit. Okay. So all you do is you give them breaks and you pretty much do whatever you, you have to do for oh, the okay. patients during okay. the you. break times. Okay. Yeah. So you come in, you get your, your 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 huddle um do you when you say you're saying some people stay over for double time is mm-hmm. is that an option for all nurses do they yes. ask you to- so you can uh you can there's a, a schedule that you have um online and you can put yourself available okay so they will call those nurses that put themselves available again based on seniority mm-hmm. and you know if um you're available and they ask you to stay you stay if you're not available you know or if if you're even if available but you don't want to stay you say yeah. no and you don't stay. so okay so you work a 12-hour shift and then you work another 12 hours oh four, four more hours, hours. Mm-hmm. okay i was about to say doubles like the 24 <laughs> hours do you no, get to double sleep is two eights yeah because okay. 12 considers uh you know like a shift and a half mm-hmm. they yeah they consider okay. it as a like if if a night shift comes in at 7 p.m to 7 a.m they get paid through the whole 12 hours night shift Okay, gotcha. For us, we come from, um, you know, 7 to 7, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And we mm-hmm. get paid through the whole 12 hours p.m. shift differential. Okay, okay got you. Mm-hmm. Um, so usually an, a work day is eight hours. In the ICU, yes. do nurses, all nurses work 12 or how does that so, work? So uh, depending which ICU. Um, our ICU here um, where I work, it mm-hmm. does 12. Uh, other ICUs do eight hours. You know, there's okay. different, um, like f- the whole hospital is, in my hospital, I think we're the only unit that does 12 hour shifts. That's, I mean, that's kind of nice because you get to knock out. For sure. <laughs> yeah, you get to knock out in, the, in 24 hours in two days. You know, even if I, because you can pick up extra days, even yeah. if I come pick up eight extra hours right mm-hmm. um that's over at 3 15. okay and then uh by the time you get home you know that's like a huge traffic 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 okay. time so it's not even worth it you know you just Driving. stay for the yeah. yeah stay for the you know 12 hours and then there is no traffic at you know at 7 15 yeah, yeah. in the evening okay let's talk a little bit about i know the term i don't know what it is mm, very charting 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 so I'm not studying to be a nurse, but I'm trying to ask questions that maybe that someone is mm-hmm. uh, would ask. Uh, how does charting work? Um, that'd be my first question. Then my second question is just like the nursing dynamic when you work with different nurses. Is it is it easy to work with other nurses and patients? What are the easy parts? What are the hard parts? So charting, um, it's all computerized. Okay, um, it's. It takes quite a bit of time, to mm-hmm. be honest, because, you know, you go from a system to system and you usually only will chart something that's not normal, you know, and then for an ICU patient, mm-hmm. a lot of things Everything. are not normal. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so you would, uh, you say, you, you know, ex- you know, like the, you do just point out the, the things that are not normal and then you have choices. You just click, you know, you know, like ball sounds, hypoactive, hyperactive or yeah. absent or whatever. You just yeah. click what you hear, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then so you go, it's, you know, you do your the vital signs in our in ICU. Everything is pretty much, you know, you click if they're on drips, it's every three minutes while you titrate and every 15 minutes while they're more stable. Mm-hmm. So you click every 15 and then you just highlight everything and then you save it and you don't have to type in each number, okay. you know, it just okay, kind yeah. of populates it there for you. Okay. Uh, 
and then you do your you know little note at the end of the shift you do um you're supposed to have in our unit we're supposed to have two nurses check their skin okay because there's like patients i guess that haven't been like turned repositions okay. and they have skin issues and mm -hmm. um then i think the hospital does not get paid for that because it's it occurred in the hospital oh, so okay. it's like their thing that makes sure that everybody turn the patient yeah, and all that stuff the, the ones that are immobile yeah okay. um and then a lot of stuff that you know throughout the 12 shift hour um that don't change they're still the same so you can just copy and paste yeah yeah <laughs> well i mean well that makes it easy yeah so you do that too and okay so charting is okay charting is a little just pretty much documentation you're documenting your day the changes in the patient or no changes in the patient mm -hmm. and if there's critical labs or anything critical that you had to call the doctor for then you, of course you want to note that in your chart as well okay okay so let's talk about the kind of the nursing job side dynamic how, how is it working with other nurses is it pretty easy i mean uh helping nurses each other out how does how does that system work so you kind of know your day from the beginning it depends um let's say if you're a support nurse right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you go into the unit and you see the nurses that you're going to be supporting mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you kind of know okay this one's going to be you know charting you know 10 hours and yeah, can yeah. you do this can you do that can you do this can you do that or you know take they take 15 minute break and they'll tell you you know to do a 30 minute uh worth of work you know okay. so it you you kind of learn everybody okay um and then if you do the patient care same thing you know we have usually you have um two nurses on one on each corner you know mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. your your other nurse is usually the nurse that if you need help with something that's going to be your you know partner that's mm -hmm. going to help you you know and then again gotcha. you know if Who it's going to be somebody that's going to be like this you know done 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 you know move on or if it's going to be somebody that's going to be maybe on their phone and mm -hmm. then you hear their alarms and they don't hear it <laughs> yeah, yeah for some reason <laughs> yeah so i think it's people are people everywhere you know yeah so so it's just, just like you're probably in nursing school on a group project you notice some people we'll slacking off a little bit yeah and, yeah, yeah okay for sure. so same thing same thing at work People so people. let well, i know we talked a little bit about the why of why nursing in in the beginning but maybe just re it reiterate a little bit why did you what so you were encouraged by the doctor you're encouraged by your dad but why what ultimately made you like okay i can do this or you were just like i'm gonna try it and see if it works out i think it's just the love of maybe taking care of somebody you know if, if it's it just kind of being like a mom you know yeah. i feel like i'm i'm the mom <laughs> <laughs> taking care of the kids i totally yeah. take care of them my patients like you know like they're, i don't want to say they're my babies yeah. but i do what i would love somebody else to do for me you know mm -hmm. and i think just that just kind of that's what kind of gets me you know like i've just I like when I do something and then I see that there it makes their day you know if it makes them feel better you yeah. see the health improve or whatever mm -hmm. that's awesome um I mean that's kind of nice to know that uh nurses that are treating their patients or for example us for example they love their job and they're there oh and you can tell right away yeah you can tell i mean i come in and like oh, are you here ne next or tomorrow or when is your next date you know they they tell they ask you they you want you to come back for sure awesome see well that means for you're sure. a good nurse thank you for your service <laughs> 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 um so we talked a little bit about the school what would you say if somebody's looking to be a nurse and sounded like you had a great opportunity kind of with getting good grades and not missing school you kind of got your foot in the door with kaiser someone in school today is is it worth just sticking with your associates should they just go straight for the bachelors what kind of what do what do you see so what i did is i did so for a nursing program the program itself you know it's two years but to get into the program you have to have certain classes and you have okay. to have certain gpa as well you cannot they will not take you into a nursing program if you have you know bad grades mm -hmm. you have to you know, there's i guess a process that yes. starts from the beginning that you have to try hard to even get into the nursing okay the way i did it i did all my prerequisites for associates mm -hmm. 
And then I knew that not any, not everybody will get into the program from their first trial. Okay. So I kind of knew that, okay, I'll just do everything that I need to get my associates. Mm -hmm. And if I don't get into the program, then I have that extra time to that I can catch okay. up on the other classes for a bachelor degree. Okay, gotcha. That's what I did. Okay. But of course, I got in for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, knowing your story, everything just yeah. happens. Yeah, so I, I that's kind of... I kind of stopped right there, you know? Okay. And then again, getting my bachelor's, again, it was somebody else that... You should what? probably go get your bachelor's. <laughs> okay. So yeah. what's what's your next step? Are you, are you planning to move up? Right. So when I... When I went to bachelor's program, I was kind of thinking, you know, I'm even either going to be a nurse practitioner or a nurse anesthetist. Mm -hmm. And uh, after I finished uh, the bachelor's program, I, me and my husband went to Oakland and checked out the school for mm -hmm. um, a nurse anesthetist. Well, okay, I'm going to interrupt you. What is a nurse an anesthetist? So anesthetist. It's, it's kind of like uh, the, the, the nurse that puts people to sleep okay. for surgeries. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and then that's kind of you know I see in in I see you I see you know people get intubated. That's what the the nurse okay, anesthetist gotcha. or the the anesthesiologist does. They okay. put the breathing tube in. They give the medicine. You know, sedate patients. Okay. And we sedate patients a lot in as an ICU because we do a lot of procedures. So we do conscious sedation as a nurse. Mm -hmm. For a nurse anesthetist, it's more of a you know general sedation, like okay. totally asleep. Okay, got you. Um. <clears throat> So we, when we went to Oakland, we saw the school, we saw the area. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I don't know if I could survive. And then we were kind of sitting, you know, by the water and talking. And um, my husband says, you know, I think, I don't know if I want you to go through the stress of two, it's two more years. Yeah. Two more years of school. And then you would have to quit your nursing job because you oh, cannot really? go to school. Yeah, that's okay. their that's the requirement. requirement. And it's full time school, and again, it's it's real stuff. It's not you know what I did for bachelor's public health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know statistics and you starting know. from A. Right. So I was kind of ready for it, but then that little talk that we had, you know, in Oakland by yeah, the yeah. water there. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we kind of decided for now we'll just put that on hold and we'll see. Maybe they'll be calling maybe again day. later on. <laughs> yeah, maybe a doctor be like. Hey, actually, we'll just hire you as a just go take a <laughs> test or something. Something awesome will happen. That's 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 cool. Um, I know I know some high schools uh, have like ROP programs and stuff. I know the high school here in Roseville does. Mm -hmm. um, Oakmont High. Do, ha, have that's you ever a great experienced thing to do? It is really yeah. So if you want to be in medical field, mm -hmm. uh, I think shadowing mm -hmm. if you want to be a nurse shadow another nurse mm -hmm. of course there's different kinds of nurses shadow a nurse that you think you want to be labor delivery nurse go and see that kind of a nurse and mm -hmm. just not one day but maybe three four days because mm -hmm. in one day you know you you will see some stuff but you won't see everything mm -hmm. and same thing you know anything you want you want to be ultrasound tech you want to be who knows who i think number one thing is start with shadowing somebody else that does that job to because okay. that's a lot of schooling yeah to go through and they say oh really this is what i have to do you know? i don't think i want this <laughs> right because after during the nursing program our first rotation was in a nursing facility mm -hmm. like a assisted nursing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we were all shocked we're like <laughs> <laughs> You know, but that's, of course, not what the nurses, you know, not yeah, everybody yeah. does. Have you ever worked with any of the students that are that come in maybe? Mm -hmm. for, of okay. course, of course. How, what would you, what was your experience with the students? Or They're so excited. They see everything in like this pink collar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything's perfect. <laughs> right. <laughs> what would you, what would you say, um, like, to, 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 to the students? Are, are you, I mean, I'm guessing you are honest with them just explaining to them how how everything works i love my job so i i mean and you they can see that i i think that's how i got hooked too okay is by following somebody that loved their job okay. you know yeah yeah that's awesome well i think we're gonna wrap it up here that that's all um the questions that i have i know maybe if i was a nursing uh student or something maybe i'd have more specific questions mm -hmm. but if you guys do have questions um for nurses I'll be sure to send them your way and and whoever else no we problems. yeah whoever else we interviewed um thank you so much for coming on thank you for sharing your your story your insight and thank I you really hope me. you got it I really hope that 
more nurses are like these nurses that we interviewed because they all love their job. They love uh, treating patients and working with families and, and teaching. So that's amazing. Again, thank you so much.